Hello everyone and welcome for another November video. It has definitely been a challenge to publish again because in case you haven't noticed, I haven't published a new video in a few days, which was not my intention. My idea for this November challenge was to publish every day, although later on I realized that I had to at least pause for the weekends in order to keep my sanity but last week was incredibly hard to do so because we had an unexpected power surge and as a result of that internet was gone several appliances were dead and obviously it was a bit of a shock so recovering from that taking care of everything so hence the delay or lack of videos but I'm back hopefully for the final stretch of this challenge and I aim to publish the videos that I had intended to publish so I might still be publishing November videos in December. In any case just a little update on that but let's cut to the chase and talk about the movie that I plan on discussing today which is Key Largo released in 1948 produced by Warner Brothers and directed by John Huston. Key Largo, a lonely island off the coast of Florida, sultry, heat-ridden, cloaked in the strange menace of the sea. But stranger still is the destiny that brings these people to this remote outpost, to be held at bay with a price on their lives, by a man with a price on his head. Nothing to stop me from wiping you all out. John Huston, whom we already mentioned in the video dedicated to the asphalt jungle, had already started writing for films in the 1930s with lots of wonderful collaborations such as High Sierra or The Amazing Dr. Glitterhouse, also those in which his work wasn't credited, such as The Killers or The Stranger, just to name a couple. He had tremendous respect for his literary sources, so much so that especially the first period of his filmmaking career, which started in the 1940s, he was often criticized for being too faithful to those novels on which his screenplays were based, and perhaps not cinematic enough when staging and planning his movies. Well, in the case of Key Largo, the source material was a play written by Maxwell Anderson, which Houston himself and another great writer slash filmmaker called Richard Brooks adapted. And he does stage the movie pretty much like a play in which the whole action and all the tension is focused and is confined in one space for practically the whole picture. Criticism aside, I think that what John Huston does practically to perfection in almost all the movies that I've seen of his is put the focus on actors and actresses and get terrific performances. It seems as though he was really preoccupied in creating powerful characters. The focus also is more in a group dynamic rather than the protagonism of one or two actors. Something that I think is very clear in Key Largo as it was also in the asphalt jungle. Instead of having the spotlight on again one or two characters, it's the whole group and how each character interacts with one another that's important. What good lad do, boss? Forget it. Her kind's a dime a dozen. Smacking her isn't enough for such an insult. He'd have to kill her. Then he'd have to kill the rest of us because we witnessed it. But to kill us all or nothing. And it feels as though he gives almost as much protagonism to supporting actors as he does for leading actors and actresses. And again, as a result, you get a fantastic character study in most of his films, terrific performances, and I think that Key Largo is an excellent example of that. Also, in this case, I think that Brooks and Houston were not that faithful 
in fact to the source material because as i read they changed character names and also they changed some parts of the plot as well for instance in anderson's play the protagonist had just returned from the spanish civil war which he had deserted and in key largo's case the protagonist returns from world war ii also all the turmoil with the house of un-american activities committee and how it was affecting hollywood is very much present in Key Largo and what the movie is about. I also read too that there was influence in the script of the work of William Riley Burnett whom Houston really admired and also of Ernest Hemingway's work especially because of the somewhat exotic setting of the action which is instead of a sordid city as it was almost the norm for film noir, we have the Florida Keys as the background. Performances, as I was saying, are essential in Key Largo. So much of the weight of the movie is in those performances rather than an action-filled movie. Of course, mentioning Key Largo means mentioning Edward G. Robinson, who was absolutely magnificent here in yet another gangster role and in fact it seems that he was reluctant at first to accept the part of Johnny Rocco because he really wanted to move on from gangsters at this point of his career but upon reading the script he changed his mind and he accepted the role and we're so glad for that. It seems also that his role was based on real-life gangsters like Lucky Luciano and Al Capone, but it's also so much reminiscent of his Cesare Rico Bandello from Little Caesar. Another person that I think we really have to mention when we talk about Key Largo is Claire Trevor. She is definitely one actress that I'm really fond of, who plays in Key Largo the former girlfriend and singer Gay Dawn, and who is absolutely brilliant. I recently watched an interview that TCM's YouTube channel published in which Claire Trevor talks about Key Largo and working with John Huston and she talks also about her good rapport with Humphrey Bogart and Edward G. Robinson, especially with Robinson, which is something that I didn't know. She had appeared in a radio show called Big Town. It was a crime drama program, radio program for CBS. And it's something that I think it shows in the movie, how everyone was a team player in this movie. To be honest, my favorite performance of hers is the role of Dallas in Stagecoach, but I have to admit this, this comes as a close second and her work in film noir is quite substantial and quite brilliant performances like her femme fatale in murder my sweet and other b movies such as raw deal or borderline we have to obviously also mention humphrey bogart who is the protagonist in this movie even though it's again quite an ensemble movie in which everyone has quite a lot of protagonism perhaps lauren bacall's nora here is the only character that doesn't have that much of a background story and as much protagonism i would say even though this would be their last movie together the last bogart and bacall movie you can very much feel their chemistry and the connection between them bogart plays here one character that suit him like a glove it was the part of a cynical skeptical reluctant hero that he had also perfectly embodied in movies like casablanca or to have and have not which has a lot of similarities with key largo especially in the end of the movie which i obviously won't reveal and this would be in fact his last movie personifying that type of character as he would move on and lastly obviously i also have to mention lionel barrymore who is yet again a much welcomed presence in every movie who just elevates the quality i think of the movie just by being there and who is a guarantee at least for me that the movie that i'm going to see 
would be something that I would enjoy and that I would be very engaged with. It's just as powerful sitting as all the others are standing. As we have mentioned in all the other videos, I like to mention yet again the cinematographer of Key Largo, who in this case was Karl Freund, a really experienced and veteran German cinematographer known and acclaimed for his work in Fritz Lang's Metropolis or Dracula. He was a very innovative man, not only in films, but also in television. What he does in this movie is, yet again, bring all that German expressionism into just one setting again with a hurricane, enhancing the actor's performances to visually evidentiate all that dramatism and the decay of gangsterism. There's an idea in this movie that something has ended and these are the remnants of that. And all these actors, I think, are so well cast in order to embody that. That's all again I, that I have for you today. Thank you once again so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me for the Noir Vember challenge, for sharing the love for classic movies. As always, stay safe, take care, and see you all tomorrow with another video. Bye.